In this video, I will be introducing you to a web application called Zapier. What is Zapier? Zapier is a tool that allows you to connect your favorite web apps to each other and move information between them automatically. This allows you to move away from micromanaging your team and just focus on creating strategies to upscale your business. For example, you can connect together Gmail, Facebook, and Slack to each other using Zapier. Zapier is all about workflows. The workflow is started with an application. Facebook, in this example, receives data from a user or from another application. Let's see, you've made an FB post. This is called a trigger event. Once an application receives data, it then sends this information to another application. Twitter, in this example, and this event is appropriately called an action. This whole process or workflow is called a SAP, and this is done automatically by Zapier. So the output will depend on what conditions you've set up in your SAP. So for example, the FB post will also be posted in Twitter automatically. To get started with Zapier, let's go to their website, then register an account with them. To sign up, provide your email. Then choose your role within your company or business. Any answer will do. Here you will see all the applications that can be integrated with Zapier. Zapier boasts that thousands of applications can be integrated with them. They've already provided us the default apps, but we can always change them later. Just click continue. We are then brought to our dashboard. It's a little bit empty right now because we have not yet created our own integration. Scroll down to see some workflow templates. You can choose one that you like or you can create one for yourself. The subs page is where all your subs are going to live. This is like your homepage for your Zapier account. I haven't got anything set up here at the moment, but you can create multiple folders. The My Apps menu will show all the applications that you use. This is empty right now because we haven't created any subs yet. The task history will contain all the actions that your SAP has done. Clicking on the explore button will bring you to this page. It will show you some examples to get started with, like these pre-made SAPs. It will also give you some examples of triggers, actions, and searches, so you can have an idea of what's possible. If you click on the apps button at the top menu, it will show you all the applications that can be integrated with SAP. You can search an application by categories on the sidebar here on the left. If you click on an app, it will show you a little bit of information about it. It will also give you some examples of good apps to connect to. So, as an example, the SAP that I will make involves Gmail and Google Sheets. It basically goes like this. When an email arrives on my Gmail inbox, the sender's name, the email subject, the sender's email address, and the date when the email was received will be tabulated on a Google Sheet. The first thing you do when you create a SAP is that you want to name it. So let's give it a name. The next thing we want to do is pick our trigger app. You are given some suggestions right away. We are going to select Gmail. Once you've chosen your trigger app, you want to choose your trigger event. This is what you want Zapier to get started with. The next thing we want to do is narrow down what we trigger from. Again, we are given some suggestions to choose from. We will choose a new email as our trigger event. So that means anytime I receive a new email from my Gmail inbox, it will trigger my SAP. We are prompted to sign in to our Gmail account so that we can approve Zapier to access our account. This is so we can gather information from your account to pass it on. Once we've connected our Gmail account to Zapier, we are asked where will SAP get our trigger event. So here we only want the emails from our inbox. Click continue. 
the final part of setting up your trigger is testing your sap. Testing your sap is really important in the trigger stage because it pulls in the fields from the trigger app, which in our case the inbox of our Gmail account. To test, just click the blue button with the test trigger text on it. We put an email from a few seconds ago, and if I expand this, we can actually take a peek at the sample we found. We can see here, this is all the fields that we pulled in from our Gmail inbox. We can see I got an ID field, a thread field, a label field, and some other IDs. To see the actual email, we go to the inbox of the Gmail account we connected to. Here, we can see that the email was sent by Google, which has the subject security alert. So, I mentioned I would like to send some email details from my inbox to a Google Sheet. Next, we choose Google Sheet. Then, we select what kind of action do we want our SAP to execute in Google Sheet. We want to create a new row on the spreadsheet. We are again asked to allow SAP here to get information from our Google account. Here, I have my spreadsheet that I've set up earlier. I've given the columns headings and this is important because this is how I know where to send data to my Google Sheets. So I want to capture the name of the email sender, the email address, and the date when the email was received. The next stage is we need to tell Google Sheet what data we want to pass over to it from our Google Inbox. We do that with the Insert Fields button. If you click this button, it will pull in all those fields that Zapier found in our trigger test earlier into the SAP. So we can see now which ones we might want to use. So my SAP template is ready to go. So this will mean each time my SAP runs, each of these fields from my Gmail inbox will be added to my Google Sheet. And the final part of setting up your action is testing it. This time, the testing isn't for us. The testing is for you. It's for you to see how your SAP would work when it's live. Just to make sure that you've got all the data you want. It looks the way you want it. It's behaving the way you want. So, let's test it now. I want to test and review it. So, I'll click on the test and review button. It seems to have been successful. This means that this data was added to my Google Sheet. It says that a new row was added to row 2 of my Google Sheet, and data was added to column A, B, C, and D. So if you look on my Google Sheet, you can all see the data. You can see all the data is here. So save your done each job perfectly. We can now finish our editing. So we can go ahead now and turn our SAP on. So our first SAP has been created. Congratulations! Once the SAP is live, we can actually monitor every action that happens. So each time I receive an email and my Gmail sends a new set of data to my Google Sheet, it will create task. A task will be showing up in our task history. Here you can filter by SAP, you can filter by date, and lots of useful things. This can be a useful record for you to see what has happened on your Zapier account, what Zapier has been doing, what's going on. Let's take a look at a recent task. We can pick at a recent email here, Gmail leads to Google Sheets. We can see the data in. That's what we have looked at Gmail for in the data out. So this is the data that Gmail has sent to Zapier. And then we can see Google Sheets that Zapier sent to Gmail and what they've returned. So it's just a nice way to look at what data has been moving around in your account. This is my basic overview of Zapier. There are still many task automations that can be done with Zapier. We just cannot cover it all in this short review. Thank you for watching this video.